I LARPed a lot as a teen, but I stopped for some years. And in 2010, I, uh, some things happened that made me think about why I stopped. LARPing as a teen included a lot of uh, dead time, a lot of time when I was not in the center of the game. And I also believed I did not immerse into my character enough. I didn't know what to do with that background story I've been written at home and so on. So in the game situations I ended up in, um, I didn't know how to, I thought that people didn't like take my actions in account. I was maybe a bit shy. Uh, so overall I didn't believe my story was important and that made me feel bad about LARPing. So I would sum these feelings up like uh, some kind of performance anxiety connected to power structures and character work. So um, what happened in 2010 was that I realized I wanted to do artistic work um, where one could try out life under different circumstances and come together with people in new ways. Things LARP had promised me could be possible. So um, I was introduced to this Nordic LARP community, which was quite different from the LARPing community of my teens. And I understood that LARPing does not have to include months of preparations and lengthy background stories. So I learned that there are other ways to, uh, to design games and theory connected to it. So I started to look for a format where the participants could basically uh, get into a scenario directly from the street, just as in cinema or in an art exhibition. No role playing, no pressure to perform at all. So I wanted them to uh, feel good, be simulated and thrilled about playing. And I wanted them to be the center of the game. So what did I do? First of all, I got some company because to think and create collective experiences is not only boring, it's also difficult. And uh, I could mention a lot of people here, but I want to stick to the members of the Arts Collective Nix, which Johanna mentioned in the presentation. So together we got rid of uh, what we perceived as the problem of LARPing. We took away character, we took away this need to think back, to go ahead, and we took away all choice connected to improvisation and performance. We started to guide our participants in detail and individually. We made the audience or the participants of our pieces into avatars. And uh, it was not this kind of avatar, and not that kind either, and not that kind either. But it was more like this, an outer voice possessed the listening body of the participant. So this picture is from our first scenario and uh, in this one you hear and you follow instructions that you receive through headphones such as stretch out your arm or give the object to the person sitting or say hi so there are easy easy simple instructions um, and nothing about how you're supposed to feel so no performance no, no uh, psychology, just physical actions. And your actions is synchronized with other, with other, uh, other participants' actions, but they are not identical. So there is no improvisation, but still there is a kind of excitement about what you will do next and what others will do next. And uh, you kind of perceive the actions that you do as your own, and you also perceive the actions of others as theirs. And at the same time, you know that they're all instructed. So kind of 
allows you to reflect on this, like what are you and what is traces and voices of others. Now I'm going to shortly, shortly tell you about some three other works that we did um, and how they related to this problem with LARP that we have. So in this piece, um, to get the younger audience to, to play, we chose to mix a setup from the former piece with, uh, with a story uh, established by, by actors. And uh, the audience also had an objective. In this piece, we wanted to challenge the audience a bit by letting this improvisation uh, into the game, by letting humans into the game of the avatars. So human and avatars. And uh, our play testers, they, uh, they vis uh, wit witnessed about feeling calm and uh, uh, in charge as they had the instructions in the headphone, but more anxious and unsure as they had to manage themselves in a foreign theater. So, and this difference was exactly what we wanted to explore in this piece. And in this, my last example, the participants are school classes, and they of course know exactly what is possible for them to do in their classrooms normally, but uh, what could happen when this ghost-like presence of this voice stir the social patterns up? That's what this piece is about. So I started out by wanting to get rid of what troubled me with LARPing. And I did that by creating something new. I not only ended up with this arts collective responsible for a series of performance, but uh, I was uh, also finding my gate to a whole new field of artistic research. And maybe one could think that there is no kind of nothing left for the participants, but actually there is this kind of fleshy solidarity of, uh, of being together in a room, in a shared space that the avatars have together that no godlike voice could ever experience. So thank you. Mm -hmm.